All right, in the last video we talked about how ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, is made in the nucleolus from a 90S pre-ribosome. And we do some various modifications such as base modification, methylation, and we start clipping uh, this pre-ribosome and we start getting some pre-rRNA, such as pre-40S rRNA, pre-60S rRNA. We do some more exonuclease or endonuclease cleavages and so on and so forth, and once we get it into the cytoplasm we have mature ribosomal RNA. So ultimately for ribosomal RNA we don't need any splicing. There's no splicing necessary because all, we're, all we have to do is basically clip off useless pieces which are shown in yellow here on either side of or ends of these uh, pre-RNAs. With ribosomal RNA, we don't need to do any splicing. There are some pieces that we don't need, we just need to clip those off with exonucleases, and so on and so forth. Um, for our RNA, though, we do need to modify bases. All right? So the main thing we're having to do is methylate and modify bases. We start talking about transfer RNA processing. I mentioned that this is probably about the most complicated that we're going to see, certainly. Uh, for modification, this one is going to involve splicing, but it's also going to involve a lot of other things. Um, we're going to need to clip it in certain places and also modify the bases. And modifying bases, again, is something that we don't see in mRNA. All right? So let's talk about how the tRNA is, is modified. All right. You have this basic uh, list of things right here that happen initially. Then we're, after that, we're going to have splicing. Basically, what we're going to have is uh, base modification. All right, I don't have this right here, I don't believe. Let's see where I have it. But we have various what we call funny bases. Your tRNA nitrogenous base processing, meaning we're going to take the bases that are already there, adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine, and we can modify those in different ways. These are just some examples. And in, in some of the videos after this, I show mechanisms of how we do that. For example, we can take uridine and modify it to thiouridine. So instead of an oxygen up here, we have a sulfur. We can deaminate adenosine to make inosine. We can methylate guanosine to make methylguanosine. We can do all sorts of stuff. We can even, in the case of pseudouridine, we can actually change the attachment point of the ribose ring is very unusual. We can reduce double bonds, as in the case of dihydrouridine. We can methylate uracil bases to make thymines, something we don't normally think of finding in RNA. Then we can also transfer uh, prenyl groups onto different bases. So we have to modify them in, in some ways. And that's the first thing that happens. Okay. There are also, when we get the primary transcript of the tRNA, it sort of adopts this secondary structure like this, where you get a complementary base pairing. And for the most part, it's complementary. We do have some unusual pairings. For example, look at where you have these dots instead of lines. That's a U and a G pairing. We normally don't think of that as being able to pair, but it actually is stable enough to where it can and transfer RNA. Another example is shown right here, U and G again. Those can actually pair to some extent. Okay? So we have some unusual base pairing that we don't see in the function of RNA polymerase also. We'll also see that again in translation when we look at the ribosome. But in the primary transcript, we have these parts in yellow which are not needed. For example, this leader sequence right here on the 5 prime end in yellow does not need to be there. And so what's going to happen is we have an enzyme called RNase P that's going to slice off that useless fragment right there called the leader sequence. And so you see it's not there in the intermediate. Okay. Also, we have two, uh, two nucleotides up here, U and U, that are not needed. So we're going to cut those off too. That's called the three prime cleavage. Now also notice, the, if we were to cut off that UU, the terminal three prime end should be an A. Now we need to add onto that A a CCA sequence, so three nucleotides. All right, that's called the acceptor stem CCA, not present in the primary transcript. The way that we can put that on there is through an enzyme called tRNA nucleotidal transferase. Okay, tRNA nucleotidal transferase, and it's able to add C, C, and A. Okay, and that C, C, and A is important, particularly the A, because the three prime OH of that A is going to be what actually physically bonds to amino acids and brings them to the ribosome. Okay. So that's basically what has to happen first. Once we get to this intermediate, we also have this yellow in 
interior part of the tRNA sequence that we don't need. So we're going to splice that out. And when we splice that out, ultimately it's going, we're going to basically connect this A right here to this A up here. Ultimately, the yellow part's gone, and that part where we put it together becomes what's referred to as the anticodon loop. The anticodon, hopefully we know by now, is what bonds to the codon in the ribosome, and what facilitates uh, mRNA, tRNA complementary interactions. Okay, And this would be a mature tRNA. This one, for example, is specific for tyrosine, the amino acid. So the tyrosine would connect to this 3 prime OH on that adenosine up there at the top. Okay. Now before we really get into how translation works, I want to go into the general strategy for tRNA splicing, which is what we're going to cover in the next video. All right, so hopefully this made sense. Make sure to join us in the next video where we talk about tRNA splicing, and it's probably the more complicated of all the splicing that we're going to see.